Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to you. Let's have a minute's silence together. To belief, God is elusive and difficult to attain in tangible experience. To God consciousness, God experiences everywhere and is in fact the only tangibility and the only visible presence. It could be said that flight is elusive and difficult to attain in the consciousness of surface travel. There's no way a bicycle, a car, a bus, a train can fly. To experience air travel, the consciousness of air travel must first be attained. When we have that, we quickly have the objective experience of air travel. The consciousness, the thorough understanding of the principle and the living of that principle must be attained first. Now, <clears throat> principle is unyielding. Thank God for that, because when we have the consciousness of the principle and when we're living it, we can 100% trust and rely on its good, its fruitage. Indeed, principle, any principle, is unyielding, absolute. Principle cannot be mocked. Principle cannot be made to yield to suit us and our needs, even our urgent needs. And this is why we hear in Scripture that God, the principle of principles, is not mocked. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. He who sows things of the flesh, from the flesh shall reap corruption, the pairs of opposites. Even the good of the flesh is corrupted God experience because it isn't pure God experience. It's just the good end of the pairs of opposites. He who sows things of the spirit, from the spirit shall reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, in the principle of truth. For in due season we shall reap, 
if we faint not. That's Galatians. And in Joshua, God is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions, nor your sins, your missed marks or your falling short or mine. The word sin, as you know, simply means to err, to fall short of the practice of the principle, to stray, to transgress, to wander away from principle, as the Master explained in the parable of the prodigal son. In other words, if there is anything left in us that wants a result, wants healing, wants dollars, wants human love, wants worldly harmony, wants equality, then we're falling short of the principle of God and therefore we're left without the God experience. Seems like a harsh and cruel God or principle, but you see, as we've heard, thank God that principle is 100%. Thank God we can't veer or make it veer, make it yield to suit us. Otherwise, the whole universe would be in chaos. You see, in spite of our years on the spiritual path, in spite of our sincere intention to seek God for God alone and to experience God happening within for the God experience alone, if we're not very careful, we still have an unconscious aim to be free of disease, free of pain and lack, and to be healthy, harmonious, abundant. God is a jealous God. God cannot be mocked. Truth cannot be evident if, even very secretly or privately or unconsciously, we're hoping for and expecting the health or healing of the physical body. The harmonious material condition, whatever that may be or an abundance of dollars, human love. It's impossible. Remember, God has only God in it, which means that all has only God in it and about it. And what is God? Spirit. God is incorporeal. And does God, spirit, the incorporeal, have pairs of opposites, good and bad? Does God have health or wealth or love or peace in it? No, because God does not have the opposites of these in it. God is God, period. Spirit, the incorporeal the omnipresence of existence, the truth, and nothing but that one spiritual, incorporeal truth. For health to mean anything, there must be ill health to compare it to. These are just pairs of opposites. In the kingdom of God, there is neither health nor ill health. There is just is, just God. So we can't go to God for health or healing because there's no ill health in God to heal. For wealth to mean anything, there must be lack or poverty to compare it to. These are just pairs of opposites. And in the kingdom of truth, the kingdom of spirit, there's neither wealth nor lack. There is just 
is. So we can't go to spirit for wealth or prosperity because there's no lack in spirit that can be made abundant. For love to mean anything, there must be hate to compare it to. Again, these are just pairs of opposites. In the kingdom of God, there is neither love nor hate. There is just is. So we can't go to God for love or loving relationships or fixed relationships because there's no hate in God. There's no discordant relationships in God that can be made loving. In the kingdom of God, nobody knows what disease is because nobody knows what health is. Nobody knows what pain is because nobody knows what painlessness is. Nobody knows what wealth or prosperity are because nobody knows what lack or poverty are. Nobody knows what love is because nobody knows what hate is. In the kingdom of God, is, is. And that's all that is. In is, there are no opposites, and so no opposites are experienced. Oh, hear that. In is, there are no opposites. Therefore, no opposites are or can be experienced. This is the way the pairs of opposites are dissolved to reveal truth. This is the way of healing, of wealth, of love, of harmony, of peace. But be careful. God is not the way of changing one thing or condition to another. God is, and it is is that we must attain. Once we do, we have our health, our harmony, our love, our peace, our wealth. But it's not of the pairs of opposites. It's of God. And so it's permanent. It is the same yesterday, today and forever. And its measure is the same yesterday, today and forever. That measure being infinity, omnipresence, eternity. The reality of life which can never turn on us and cause a shadow. Remember James 1, 7 from Friday's class. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Well, let's take the verses we heard on Friday and work with them now in truth, in is, instead of secretly or privately or unconsciously hoping them to help us achieve a better pairs of opposites. That will never work. And so we hear that truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what is that truth? Be very sure you understand. Truth has nothing to do with anything we can name. Nothing to do with healing a bad and making it good. Nothing to do with the pairs of opposites at all. Truth is and is is all truth is we attain is by lifting right out of the pairs of opposites dropping them forgetting them leaving them on the ground if you like and rising in consciousness to the kingdom of is And there we discover not healed, 
opposites, not healed bad, healed physical bodies, healed finances, healed love, healed worldly peace and union, but simply the state of is, the body of is, God is, the world of God is, the relationships of God is. The family, the home, the neighbourhood of God is. All things were made by him. What things are we speaking of? The is things. There are no other things. There is a whole universe of belief about those things that make them appear to be of opposites. But there's no truth to that belief. All things were made by him. And those things are the things of is, of the kingdom of God. And without him was not anything made that was made. There it is, that really explains it. Without him, without God, which is, is, was not anything made that was made. Well, what is the only thing that is can make? Is. All things are is. We are the children of is. We are the individual presence and expression of is. Nothing less, nothing different. To find our truth, we must rise into is. We must recover our state of is. Leave belief behind. Leave the pairs of opposites behind and be very thorough in cleaning your house, your consciousness of any remaining desire even those unconscious desires, those desires that we just have a little sniff of, a little feeling of, well, even that little feeling of a desire for some kind of result is enough to take us right out of the principle and leave us barren of the experience of truth. So let us be very thorough house cleaners. Let us be completely virgin beings, pure and empty, a true nothingness, so that we can be filled with is and in that way experience the one truth of is alone. And then we are free. He is in the world. Well, right there, let's stop and ask ourselves, what he is in the world? God, yes, but what is God? God is, is. Nothing to do with belief, nothing to do with the pairs of opposites. Is, is in the world. And then, and the world is made by him. The world is him. The world is, is. But the world knows him not. How long has it taken to lift above the world consciousness, human material consciousness, and even begin to know and truly realize and then live by is alone. Well, it may have taken us right up to now to do so, and that's fine. Now is now, and so let's now realize what we're hearing tonight and in that way discover our freedom. 
Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Well, is has made, even better, is, is heaven and earth. And is, is the omnipotence, the one power of heaven and of earth. And there is nothing too hard for is. Of course not, because in is, only is exists. And so the minute we've lifted up into is, there we are with only is, with the one power operating as us. Being us, being the power of our minds, our bodies, our worlds, of is. You're hearing it. We can't witness is. We can't witness infinity, omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence. If we're trying to in something we believe is other than is, different from is, separate from is, we can only witness is in and as is. Is is infinity. Is is omnipresence. Is is omniscience. Is is omnipotence. And in is we have all this truth. And we witness all this truth. As the oneness we are. And the oneness we are with and as our universe. And all in it. Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. What bread? Is bread. Indeed, blessed is he and she that eats the bread that is, which we can only find in the kingdom of God. And then we hear a couple of verses further on. Behold, everything is made ready for you. Come. In is. Everything is made ready for you. Come. Just come to is. Leave your personal self behind. Leave everything about it behind. Leave the mental mind behind. You don't need it. Listen to the master. Take no thought for your life. Well, if that's the case, why do we need the mental mind? Take no thought for anything of your life. Take no thought for love, for wealth, prosperity, success, safety, security, harmony. You don't need a mental mind. The spiritual mind, the unconditioned mind, well, that's the window of heaven. And what is that unconditioned mind? Is. So leave everything else of you behind. Leave everything that's bad or discordant, diseased, painful behind. And its opposite behind. And don't be afraid, by the way, you won't lose yourself. In fact, in is, you'll discover the truth of yourself. And as quickly as that, when you've reached is. So don't be afraid. Release everything about yourself. Including that mental mind. And lift into the pure and blissful state of is. And there... Behold, everything is made ready for you. Just come to is, the Master is telling us. There, in is, your whole and healthy body is ready for you. You don't have to go through any healing process or any time it takes. The whole and healthy body is made ready for you. Just come to it. 
All the love in the kingdom of God is there, made ready for you, and all the specific relationships of love. Individual love, family love, neighborhood love, the love between colleagues, customers, nations, the world is ready for you. The wealth of the kingdom is made ready for you. The success of the kingdom is made ready for you. Just come. That's all. You've never had to struggle for these truths, these goods. You've never had to work for them. You've never had to earn them. They are yours by inheritance or default. You are the very being, the very presence, the very world of God. Son, you are ever with me, and all that I have is your. There it is, is yours. Well, just lift into that is. And there, behold, everything is made ready for you. Just come. God makes all goodness abound to you. Is makes all goodness abound to you. That you may always have enough of everything, of every good for yourselves. And that you may abound in every good work, every truthful work. And let me assure you that every truthful work comes complete with all its resources, all its customers or clients or patients or students, all the finances needed, all the contacts needed. It's a miracle what happens in experience when we are doing the good work of truth. And what is that work? The work of is. And how do we do the work of is? We must be up there in the consciousness of is. We must live without the pairs of opposites. We must live without the sense of need, the sense of desire. We must live without goals, those things that humans do. We must live in and as is. And is is self-complete. The miracle of the right contact, the right resource, the right knowledge, the right wisdom. The miracle of strength and energy, really hardly ever depleting. These miracles come from everywhere, out of the earth, from around the universe, right into your lap. So that the good works done by the being of is and the works of is may flourish and benefit the world ceaselessly. Is makes all goodness abound to you. The consciousness of is. Our sufficiency is of God. There it is. Our sufficiency is of is. Sufficiency itself is is. We do not have to mentalize is. We do not have to earn is or earn our sufficiency. Sufficiency is because is is. 
Let's go back a couple of verses. Behold, everything is made ready for you. Come. Well, behold, sufficiency is made ready for you. Just come to is. Sufficiency in all departments of life. Remember, in is, there are no categories. Is, is. Is exists in all its form, all its self-completeness, at every point of the infinite, simultaneously. Lift into is, rest in is, let is be your very being, be your very world. And you will witness all sufficiency in every department of life abounding to you. Sin, falling short, or wandering away from pure principle, shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, in the consciousness of is, devoid of every hope or every secret aim or desire for a solution to a problem. Sin or belief shall no longer have dominion over you. For you are not under the law. In the consciousness of is you are not under the law, but under grace. Where all abounds to you. Where all is made ready for you. Unconditional good. Free good. The kind of good and lack of condition that is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of truth. When you are under is, you are free of the law of the pairs of opposites. And the minute you are free of the pairs of opposites, you are free of their effects. You are free of both disease and health. And that's why you'll never experience either again. You now have is as your life. And you can say along with Paul, I live, yet not I Christ, or is, lives my life. Well, when is lives your life, you have neither health nor ill health, and nor can you. Your life is truth, your body is truth, which is completely immune to both disease and its opposite health. That's the truth of your body right now. And the minute you can let go of the pairs of opposites, the minute you can let go of that sneaky desire to replace disease with health and have good physical health and lift into is instead which has neither disease nor health, there. There your truthful body is. It's been waiting for you for eternity. And now you have it. Right here on earth you have it. 
And you can hear the master again. I live in the world, but I am not of the world. Right here you have your truthful body in the world, but it no longer is of the world. It really is no longer of physicality. Yes, it still appears to be physical, and to everyone else it is. But you know, this is the only important thing, because one with God is a majority. You know that what appears to be the physical body is just the corporeal sense of the spiritual body, the body of is. And there you are, you have it, it's living as your body, and you are free, and you are immune to the pairs of opposites that affect the physical body. And the same with wealth. You now have is as your wealth. You're free of material wealth and material lack because is now lives your wealth, your finances, your business. And you can never again experience the pairs of opposites operating or the law of belief, the pairs of opposites, operating on your wealth, your finances, your business. You're free of the law and free in grace, in is. And what appears to be material money and is to everyone else, you know as just the corporeal sense of is appearing to be the forms of what we call money. But is is real to you. And you're living it, and you're letting it live your wealth, your finances, your business, your success. And so you are entirely immune to the law of the pairs of opposites, the law of belief operating amongst your wealth, your finances, your business. All you have now is is, and is is infinite abundance omnipresent, immediately available at every step. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ, truth, may rest upon me. Now, is, is sufficient for you. And please understand that to be and take it literally. Is, is entirely sufficient for you in, out, and throughout, because is, is all. Don't believe in separation, indifference. Is, is all. For my strength, my truth, and the power of truth is made perfect in weakness. In the weakness of what? Humanity. The weakness of ego, the weakness of the pairs of opposites, the weakness of belief, the weakness of the mental mind, the weakness of the personal self. All of this must become entirely weak so that in is my strength is made perfect, is witnessed as being perfect. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my, the personal self, infirmities, my nothingness. Oh, hear that. I would rather glory in my nothingness. So that the power of is may rest upon me may fill me and may be visibly evident as all that I am and all that I have and all that I do.
And then we hear, not by might, nor by power, not by personal might, physical power, material power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Well, what is spirit? Is Spirit is, is, nothing less than is, says the Lord of hosts. And what is that Lord? And what are the hosts? Is. Only is, is. And then Isaiah. By these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So will thou recover me and make me to live. By is all men live. And in all these things is the life of is. So will thou recover me. So will is recover me. Heal me. Be the abundance I have and I witness. Be the love I have and I witness. So wilt thou recover me and make me to live. So will is recover me and make me to live. Be not afraid of them. Be not afraid of the pairs of opposites. And be not desirous of the good pairs of opposites, the solutions to problems. For they cannot do evil neither also is it in them to do good. Be not afraid of that which appears to be. Be not afraid of form, good or bad. Be not afraid of that which belief calls disease. Poverty, hate, insecurity, injustice, immorality. Be not afraid of these apparent forms or conditions or people, because they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. We can't find in a form, we cannot get from a form, and we cannot induce a form or influence a form with the supposed power of God to do either evil or good, to be a problem or its solution. Form does not have this capability. Form is nothing in and of its own self. It cannot receive God. Because only God is, therefore only God can receive God, if we wish to state it like that. We can only witness God in God and as God. So now we must lift out of them that previously we have been afraid of and have sought the opposite of. Lift right out of them, the whole pairs of opposites, into is and there. All our good is. All our good is prepared for us. Many of the Psalms also speak of this prepared good. Perhaps we'll have a class with the Psalms one of these days. Okay. I, which is, is, will bring the blind by a way that they know not. I, is 
will lead them in paths that they have not known. I, is, will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I, is, do unto them, and not forsake them. Release the personal self, every breath of him and her. Release the physical body, every cell of it. And the desire for it, all that health and vitality, youthfulness, we may, as we are still operating in the pairs of opposites, desire for the physical body, release. Release everything to do with love, as far as we know love and can explain love and can desire love. Release everything to do with wealth, as far as we can explain it, desire it. Release everything to do with business, with success, with prosperity, as far as we can explain it or desire it. Release the whole world as far as we can explain it and desire good for it. Don't ever try to reach into God to do good for the world. It's impossible. The world is heaven. Earth as it is in heaven. God is and made the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them. And what is heaven and earth and all the hosts of them? Is. Is, is. Is doesn't need to become is. Is already is, is. So we just have to lift into is. We just have to release everything, everything about us and lift into is. And there is earth as it is in heaven. There is all the host of them. Remember the Master, we've heard it probably a hundred times, let's hear it 101 tonight. Or, let's make it 101 tonight. That which ye bind on earth, ye bind also in heaven. In other words, heaven is locked out of our experience and entirely unavailable to us. As long as we are believing and attaching ourselves to and desiring things of the world or of anything, of the mind, of the body, of people, of business, of neighbours, of family, of home, and so on. However, whatsoever ye release on earth, ye release also in heaven. Release everything of yourself and of your world, Completely, thoroughly, search yourself. Remember that beautiful scripture. God, search me for any darkness remaining in me, for any desire in me. Be completely pure and empty and clean, transparent, a nothingness, a vacuum, and lift now into is and watch the miracle of is being now evident as all that you are and all that you have and all that you do and then James again every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, is from and is itself, is. And comes down from the Father of lights, from is or out of is, into our corporeal sense of is. 
with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Why is there no variableness and no shadow of turning? In other words, why can there never be dark in our experience again? Or if some slips through, if we wander off a little bit one day, at least we quickly know what's happened and quickly know how to resolve it. And that is, leave everything of the earth behind and get up into is again and there rest and discover that all is made ready for us. Now, why is there no variableness? And why is there no shadow of turning? Because is is omnipresent. Is is fully present at every point of the infinitude at the same time. There's no space left over for anything but is. And is is the light of lights. Is is God, which is omnipresent at every place of omnipresence. So, in other words, the light of truth, the form of truth, exists everywhere, omnipresent, throughout the infinite, at the same time. So nothing can cause darkness. You catch that? And how do we live this truth in actual, practical, tangible experience? We stay in the consciousness of is. That's it. If you can really hear the Master saying, Behold, everything is made ready for you. Come. If you can just hear that absolute truth, if you can trust that absolute truth, and thereby release everything, even everything of you, be prepared to lose that old you. Don't worry, you won't lose yourself in terms of your name and your presence here on earth, your family, your business, your neighborhood, and even as we've heard so many times, your favorite restaurant, your favorite food, your favorite place. You won't lose these things, but most certainly be prepared to lose the old you and have the new you spring forth. Be prepared, if necessary, to lose friends. Even lose family members if this is the way it will be. And sometimes it is. For me, it was. Am I sad about losing every single human friend? Am I sad about losing family? Well, I miss my children, yes. But am I sad about the new me that filled me with the impulse to leave all friends and even family? No, of course not. I am now, at least by a degree, living in is. Is lives my life. The new me has been able to hear the Miracle Self message and share it with you devoted students around the world. Am I sad about that? Of course not. Of course not. I can't have my human friends and my human family and the Miracle Self and you and that old personal self. Of course I can't. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Now, I'm not telling you what to do. Of course not. I'm not suggesting what you should do. I'm saying when you're ready. Well, first of all, I'm saying if you're struggling with the experience of God in your life, this is why. We have to adhere 
to the principle. And that principle is the principle of oneness. Invariable. We cannot wander away from oneness. We have to be absolutely adherent to the principle. Not 24 hours a day, that's probably impossible at this stage of our awakening. But at least for good periods of the day, we have to leave the world behind, leave all desire behind, leave all sense of need behind, leave all sense of wanting to help those who come to us behind. We have to be very strict with ourselves and empty ourselves of every desire or every unconscious aim to have good evident or made evident and lift as a purity of being as an emptiness and nothingness into is and there rest and experience the good of is abounding to us experience everything made ready for us now ours and indeed we do. So when we're ready for this, that readiness includes being willing to let go of and send off to sea forever the personal self, the old self. I'm hearing Paul right now. Be ye renewed by the renewal of your mind. Well, is happening as you is the renewal of your mind, your being, is. So when you're ready, do it. And it doesn't matter, really, whether you're ready now or in a thousand years or a million years' time, because whenever that time is, it will be the time of now, and really only now matters. So don't be concerned or don't force it. Certainly don't force it. Be ready and be willing to let everything go, be willing even for a little dry patch where everything seems to have gone to pot. Be patient, wait patiently on the Lord, on your ability to be so empty and so full of is, to let is become evident throughout your life. And then, when you do, then you're there forever. It would certainly be untruthful of me and not right of me at all to say to you or to suggest that we can hang on to those things that we want and have God pour through us and make them all good. It isn't true. I can also tell you in my own experience, you know it, at least most of you, that I had to let go of my not only my old self, every friend, my family, but my business too, even my country, <laughs> you know that. And then, then I witnessed God living me. Is there any regret, any sadness? No. Those of you who've met me, no, there's no sadness in my eyes. There's no lack of joy, no lack of freedom being lived. There's just the bliss, the true freedom, the true isness of God. Now, do you want that? Of course you do. 
So I guess what I'm trying to say is when you're ready, please understand and be willing to let go of everything of the old you. All that can possibly happen is your unconditional and unimaginable fulfillment. I can assure you from my own experience that you will have never experienced such love, such joy, such expression, such freedom of expression, such fulfillment of being and purpose, such success, if you like. Really, there's no success in is, there's just is. But that is is boundless in its reach, in its result. So that's what I can tell you and that's what I can promise you. So when you're ready, let go of everything and lift into is without fear and be willing to have everything adjust in your life, everything transform. Everything become new and wondrous in and as God. Let's sit in is together for some minutes. Yes, you see, we cannot truly say that we love God if we're not willing to let everything go and truly experience God itself, truly let God live itself as us. We cannot truly say that we love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and all our strength if we're trying to do so or claiming that we're doing so while holding on to our personal selves, our business, our family and so on, even our country, even our world. The only way we can experience God, the only way we can have God as our being, as our body, as our world, as our everything, is to truly love God. So much so, so entirely so, that we let go of everything else and see what God has for us. 
and what God has for us, because God is that, is fulfillment. God is fulfillment. And because God is infinite and unimaginable, the fulfillment of truth is infinite and unimaginably good and unimaginably capable of serving the world, being the God of our world, being the light, the food, the love, the comfort, the wealth, the harmony, the peace of our world. Yes, that's our message tonight. Thank you, thank you, my friends. Much love.